Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you watching the broadcast. We've got some exciting things to share with you. You know, one of the most thrilling things about the Word of God is it teaches us the freedom that Jesus bought and paid for through His shed blood. Thank God we're free. Thank God we're free. Aren't you glad you're free in this audience today? You know, thank God we are free. I want to begin reading from John chapter 8, and we're going to be talking about our freedom for the next several weeks, so I want to encourage you to join with me each and every day if you possibly can. John chapter 8, and I'd like to begin reading in verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What a powerful statement. Notice he says, if you continue in his word. Now notice he didn't say, if you start out in my word, but if you continue in my word. When I came to the Lord, this was the very first scripture I ever read. Now I'm not saying it's not the first scripture I'd ever heard, but it's the first scripture I read when I began my walk with the Lord. And I thought, okay, you know, if I'm going to be a preacher, I guess I better read the Bible. Wasn't that a great uh, <laughs> thought on my part? So I didn't know where to start. I, I, I thought maybe, you know, page one, but then Carolyn said, no, start over in the New Testament. So I found the New Testament and I opened my Bible and it just fell open to John chapter eight. And these are the very first verses I read. And I don't think it was a coincidence. Because once again, it says, if you continue in my word. Now that little word continue got as big as my Bible, it seemed. I, I, it seemed like the only word I could see in that whole Bible from that moment was continue. And then I heard on the inside of me, that's the missing ingredient in your life. You're a good starter, but you don't continue. And he said, if you're going to be successful as a minister, if you're going to be successful as a husband, a father, or any other endeavor, then you're going to have to learn to develop the art of continuing. You're going to have to perfect the art of continuing. And so I made a decision right then. I remember lifting up my hand and said, Lord, from this moment forward, quit is no longer going to be an option in my life. Now, how many of you have heard me say that? I've been saying it for 45 years now, that quit is no longer an option in my life. So you've got to make that decision. If you want to live in the kind of freedom that the Bible says we're entitled to, then quit must no longer be an option. You don't even think of quitting. If you happen to think of it, you cast that thought out. Amen. Amen. And notice he says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Then the next thing that happened was that word disciple jumped out at me. What is a disciple? It's not just someone who goes around saying, oh, I'm a Christian. Well, there are Christians and then there are disciples. You know, disciples are true followers of him. And he said, if you're going to be a true follower of him, then you're going to have to continue in his word. Now, the word disciples, I believe, comes from the word disciple. In other words, it comes from the word discipline. A, a true disciple is a disciplined one. And the only way that you and I can truly discipline ourselves is by continuing in the Word. Mm -hmm. So now two things have jumped out at me. My first day as a, as a sold out person to Jesus Christ. Number one, I have found out that if I want to be free, if I don't want to be successful, if I want to enjoy God's best, that I might have to perfect the art of continuing and quit can no longer be an option. And if I want to be a true disciple, a disciplined one that is going to require much of God's word. I'm going to have to feed on and continue in the word of God and notice the results and that you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. Amen. So that, be, that was the pursuit that I began 45 years ago there became on the inside of me a quest for truth. I want to know the truth. I don't want to know religion. I don't want to know denominational creeds. I don't want to know tradition. I want to know the truth because it's not religion that makes you free. It's not traditions that make you free. 
and it's not necessarily denominational creeds and doctrines unless they're the truth that make you free. It's the truth that sets you free. Amen. Say that with me. The truth will set you free. Amen. So if you want freedom, then you're going to have to know the truth. Now, Hosea chapter four, verse six says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And I like to just add to that, the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Amen. My people perish because they don't know the truth. Now, a lot of people, you know, they go around saying, well, the Lord made me sick. The first thing I think of, they don't know him and they don't know the truth. (laughs) Amen. Well, you know, God loves poverty. First thing I think it, they don't know him and they don't know the truth. You know, well, God wrecked my car to teach me something. They don't know him and they don't know the truth. Amen. Well, maybe I'm getting, maybe I'm giving glory to God out of being sick. They don't know him and they don't know the truth. Amen. That's just the first thing I think, you know, why did God take my baby? They don't know him and they don't know the truth. Amen. God is not going around taking babies. God's not making people sick. And God certainly does not love poverty because his word says poverty is a curse. And thank God we've been redeemed from the curse. So you can see, right? I mean, just from that little bit I've shared, you know, the excitement that comes over it, you know, truth is exciting. I mean, I, I remember when I started reading the Bible and learning these truths, the basic redemptive truths, the first thing I thought of, I've been lied to all my life, you know, uh, and it wasn't deliberate. I mean, you know, my parents taught me, you know, right from wrong and so forth. But as far as truths from God's word, they, they didn't know them. They, they loved God. They were good Christian people, but they didn't know the truth like what I'm talking about right now. Uh, they knew things, knew enough about teaching myself and my sister right from wrong and, you know, endeavoring to teach us how to live a good moral life, you know, and, and all that. But as far as redemption, what, it, what was really involved in redemption, what I'm redeemed from, they didn't know those things. I mean, when we talked about, you know, Jesus in our house, the first thing we thought of was um, he saved us from our sins. Mm-hmm. You know, thank God he saved us from our sins. But I didn't know by his stripes we were healed. I hadn't heard that when I was a child growing up. Mm-hmm. We didn't know that in our house. I didn't know that I was redeemed from the curse. If somebody had said uh, in our house, you're redeemed from the curse. I said, what curse? <laughs> I wouldn't have known what they was talking about. <laughs> redeemed? What's that mean? Yeah. You know, but as I got into the word in 1969, my life was changing. I mean, you know, when you hear the truth, when you discover the truth, all the change doesn't happen on the outside first. It changes on the inside. Amen. It gives you a different outlook. Yes, and then things begin to change on the outside. Amen. So if we keep reading, well, in verse 33, they answered him, we be Abraham's seed and we've never been in bondage. You know, I think the worst kind of bondage is when you don't know you're in bondage. Amen. Amen. That's the worst kind of bondage. I mean, there are a lot of people know they're in bondage and they won't help. But these people said, we're the seed of Abraham. Now that very phrase indicates that they knew something about the covenant that God had established with Abraham. And in that covenant, the seed of Abraham should not be in bondage to anything. The Bible said in Deuteronomy chapter 28, that as this, as a, a covenant person, that you'll be the head and not the tail above and not beneath. Amen. So that's talking about not being in bondage to anything or anyone. So they knew enough to know that they were not to be in bondage. Why? Because we're Abraham's seed. We're not supposed to be in bondage. But they said, we've never been in bondage. Well, they were so steeped in religious bondage right then that they didn't even know it. You know, I mean, they had 900 laws to each one commandment. And that's, you know, that's just a figure out there, there, but there was really more than that. You know, and, and they were so bound up, they could hardly do anything. You know, every time Jesus healed somebody on the Sabbath, oh, you can't do that. 
you can't heal. Thou shalt not heal on the Sabbath. Like they healed any other day. They never healed anybody <laughs> on any other day. But just make sure you don't do it on the Sabbath. You know, they were so bound up that they could hardly wake up in the morning. And, and they knew they were not supposed to be in bondage, but they're in bondage up to their eyeballs. But Jesus went on to say to them in verse 36, if the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Now, let me read another translation. The Amplified Bible says, if the son liberates you, then you are really and unquestionably free. If Jesus ever liberates you, then you are unquestionably free. And then the message translation says, so if the Son sets you free, you are free through and through. Hallelujah. So it sounds like to me that free indeed from the King James, unquestionably free from the Amplified, and free through and through Mm -hmm. sounds like to me God wants us totally and completely free. Is that what it sounds like to you? Praise God. Look at your neighbor and say, you're supposed to be free through and through. Those of you that are watching the broadcast, say that with with me. I'm supposed to be free through and through. In other words, you are to be totally free. God does not want you in bondage to anything or anyone. If the Son sets you free, well, let me ask you this. Did He go to Calvary? Did He go to the cross? Did He pay, pay the price? Did He redeem us? Redeem means to buy back. You know, we were under Satan's control because of what Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden. We were in bondage to Satan, but thank God Jesus came and redeemed us. He bought us back. Hallelujah. We are not a slave to anything or anyone any longer. And the Bible even says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Look at somebody say, I am the redeemed. Hallelujah. And I'm already preaching myself happy. I'm doing for you. Hallelujah. Amen. We are free. The son has set us free and we are free indeed. Like that civil rights movement theme, you know, free at last, free at last. Thank God almighty free at last. Well, that's the way we're supposed to think. We are free at last. Now you say, well, now, wait a minute. I know a lot of Christians that are still in bondage. Well, it's not because Jesus failed at his job. He didn't fail at his mission. He said, I came to do the will of him who sent me. Amen. And what did God send him to do? Well, you can figure that out all the way back from Genesis chapter three, verse 15. God said to that serpent, which was symbolic of Satan. He said, I will put enmity between you, your seed and her seed and her seed will bruise your head. In the little Hebrew, that is break your power. In other words, God acknowledges that because of what Adam and Eve did, their disobedience to God, their high treason against him, that now Satan is in control. Okay. And he says, but it's not going to last forever because her seed is going to come and he's going to bruise your head. He's going to break your power. In other words, We're going to get this power back. Enjoy it while you can, but we're getting it back. Hallelujah. Now he said that all the way back in Genesis 3, 15, a lot of time, hundreds of years have gone by, but during the course of time, God keeps raising up prophets who keep saying that the Redeemer is coming. Isaiah talked a lot about it. The Redeemer is coming. You know, the, 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 the mighty one, the seed is coming. And then John the Baptist comes on the scene. We're talking about hundreds of years after God had spoken this in Genesis chapter three and hundreds and hundreds of years later, John the Baptist comes on the scene. He's the forerunner and he's letting the world know, Hey, not much longer. He's coming. He's coming. And then one day John hears about all these miracles that are taking place. And he says, go, he sends his followers, go find out if he's the one. And Jesus responded to that and said, you know, the lame are walking, the blind are seeing, the crippled are walking and people are being set free. And John knew that's him. And then Jesus came to John to be baptized. And you remember what the Bible says in the book of Matthew, 
the moment he was baptized, there was a loud voice from heaven and said, declaring, this is my beloved son. He could have just as easily said, here is the seed that I spoke about in Genesis 3. The seed has come. And what did Jesus set out doing immediately? Undoing the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 But it was not complete until he went to the cross, shed his blood, died, spent three horrible days in Satan's domain to pay the price, pay the price rather, of Adam's transgression. And then after those three days, the Supreme Court of the universe, heaven itself, was satisfied that the work was complete, the job has been done, and thank God Jesus redeemed us from the bondage of Satan. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Apostle Paul says, now stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. Amen. Amen. Stand fast in the liberty. So the, the, the work has been done as far as us being able to enjoy total freedom. Jesus did that at Calvary over 2,000 years ago. Now, our responsibility is to stand fast in that. I like to say it this way. Man's authority releases God's ability. God has given us authority over the devil, but you have to exercise that authority. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter um, 18, verse 18 says, whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Mm -hmm. What's that saying? If man will release his God-given authority, yes, then God in turn will release his ability. Yes, so Amen. when the devil is trying to keep you in bondage, you have to take authority over him. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whose I am and whom I serve, as Paul would say. That's right. I take authority over you, Satan. I bind this sickness. I bind this poverty. I bind this oppression. You have no right to keep it in my life, even put it in my life. And so I take authority over you. And when you release that God-given authority, then God backs it with his ability. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout if you believe it. <clears throat> Amen. So we are free from sin. We are free from sickness and disease. We are free from oppression. We are free from fear. We are free from poverty. We are free from lack and we are free from want. Yes. Hallelujah. Sounds like we are totally free. Yes. Amen. We have the right to live in total freedom. And I believe it's time for the body of Christ to rise up and start walking in the freedom that Jesus shed his blood for. Amen. 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 I don't know about you, but if I have a right to be free, then I'm not spending another day in bondage. Right. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. If I have the right to be free, then I'm not spending another day in bondage. Look at your neighbor and say, enough is enough. enough, is enough. Now, there's a great example of this in Genesis chapter 27. Let's go there very quickly before our time is up. Genesis chapter 27. And here is the story of Isaac, uh, Isaac is an old man now, and he is going to bless his elder son. And um, you know the story how that the younger son deceived his father into pronouncing that blessing upon him. And when Esau finds out about this, he says in verse 38, hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. Now listen to this statement. And by thy sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that you will break his yoke from off your neck. Now listen to that statement. You're going to serve your brother because the blessing had been pronounced on him, even though he had deceived his father into pronouncing it on him. But when Esau discovers it, he says, but father, don't you have but one blessing left for me? And he says to him, you're going to serve your brother. However, it will come to pass when you shall have the dominion that you will break this yoke from off your neck. Now, another translation, the New American Standard says it this way. 
it shall come to pass when you become restless that you will break his yoke from off your neck. Restless means uneasy, unsettled, and dissatisfied. Dissatisfied implies no longer content to remain the same. No longer content to remain in this condition. So what is he saying? He's saying, Esau, you're going to serve your brother until you become dissatisfied with this arrangement. In other words, you don't have to live this way all of your life, but you will live this way until you grow restless. Now, if Isaac had been Texan, he'd have said it this way. Son, when you get fed up. Come on, that's right. Yes, sir. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. When you get fed up, with being the servant to your brother, then you're going to gain dominion and your days of his yoke on your neck will be over. Now, I believe that is a parallel of the way you and I are to live today. When Christians get fed up, everybody say fed up. When Christians get fed up with what Satan is trying to do in their lives, he's a thief. He comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy but when you get fed up with him trying to keep you in bondage, when you grow restless, when you learn the truth and you find out you don't have to live this way any longer, then that's when you're going to rise up, take your God-given dominion, your God-given authority, and you're going to say to him, my days of being in bondage to you are over in the name of Jesus. Get your yoke off my neck. Hallelujah. And he will have to obey that's what I did 45 years ago. And praise God, freedom is wonderful. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? So we have a right to be free. Everybody say, free at last. Free at last. Thank, God Thank God Almighty. We are free at last. Free at last. Amen. Last. You say it as you're watching the broadcast. You say, I am free. The Son has made me free, and I'm free indeed. I'll be back in just a few moments. Are you struggling under oppression or trying to break bad habits? Well, you can be free at last. Oppression has a way of making you feel absolutely helpless, struggling to make it through each day. In Free at Last from Oppression, Jerry Savelle teaches the truth about your situation and how Jesus paid the price for your freedom. Habits can bring you down or take you to the top. Success results from good habits. Addictions result from bad. In Free at Last from Old Habits, you can find freedom from old habits that seem impossible to break. Also included in this set is the CD teaching from Jerry Savelle, Opinions, Attitudes, and Outlooks, Vital Keys to a Bright Future. In this revealing message, Jerry Savelle will teach you the vital keys needed to produce God's blessing in your life. You can live blessed in victory and success. Don't wait. Request this powerful trio today. Free at last from oppression. Free at last from old habits and opinions, attitudes, and outlooks. Call or visit jerrysavelle.org now. Put an end to oppression and bad habits and be free at last today. Thank you once again for joining us today, and I trust you've been blessed by the message. Let me encourage you to continue watching next week and the next several weeks as we continue this study on free at last. Don't forget, we have some powerful resources that will help you learn about your freedom, how to walk in it. I have two books that I've written on free at last. One is entitled Free at Last from Oppression and Free at Last from Old Habits, and along with it, we have a special three compact disc entitled Opinions, Attitudes, and Outlooks. That has everything to do with your freedom as well, your opinion, your outlook, your perspective. And uh, when you get the outlook that the Bible has, when you begin to renew your mind and see things the way God sees them, then praise God, freedom is going to be the result. Let me um, give you a definition that I put in this book of oppression. It is defined as... Uh, unreasonable burdens. It is the state of being overbur overburdened. It is misery, hardship, grief, calamity, depression, dullness of spirit, and a sense of heaviness. And But the word freedom is defined as a state of being exempt from the control of another. Well, thank God that's what Jesus bought and paid for, is that we don't have to be under the control of the devil who is the author of oppression. Yes. 
Amen. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus came to release those who are oppressed. So you don't have to be oppressed anymore. You don't have to have a spirit of heaviness hanging over you all the days of your life. You know, you get up in the morning and you feel oppressed and you feel like that, you know, life is no longer worth living. I'm telling you, Satan is a liar. He is a liar. And you need to understand that you don't have to live in that kind of misery or grief or pain, not another day of your life. But if you're ever going to be free from it, then you're going to have to know the truth. And that's why I have written these books. That's the reason we produce these resources is to help people understand what belongs to them as children of God, what belongs to them as the redeemed by the blood of Jesus. You know, it's one thing to, to love God. It's one thing to go to church and be a Christian. And, and there are a lot of people, I mean, a lot of wonderful people all over the world that love God with all their heart. They go to church every week, but many of them go to church every week, bound up just like Jesus had never done anything at Calvary other than redeem them from their sins. Thank God that's wonderful. Oh, I'm so glad I've been redeemed from my sins. I'm glad that in the eyes of God, my past is forgiven. But folks, there's so much more. There's so much more that took place at Calvary. We'll be talking about it in some of the later broadcasts. But praise God, just think, the same Jesus who paid the price for your sins paid the price that you might live in divine health. By His stripes, you were Heal. That's freedom, praise God. Just think of all the money God could save you or wants to save you on medical bills alone if you knew that you were healed by the stripes of Jesus. Amen. So let me encourage you to order these resources right away. The sooner you get them, the sooner you can begin this study. And I'm telling you, you won't be able to put it down. Now, information for ordering, there's a number on your screen and our website is on the screen. So take advantage of that. Order it right away. Don't wait another day or two and forget about it. Do it right now while it's fresh in your thinking. Just ask yourself, how free do I want to be? Well, if you want to be free, then I can help you. I've done a lot of your homework for you. I've researched the Word from Genesis to Revelation. It's all in this material, and I'm telling you, it'll help you enjoy the freedom that belongs to you. Let me pray over you right now. Audience, join hands, and let's believe God for all those in the uh, viewing audience that they're going to experience freedom like never before. Father, we pray for everyone that is watching this broadcast all over the world. We pray that this Word has inspired them. Your, your Word says that you send your Word and you heal them. So may this bring healing to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll see you again next week. And remember, your faith will overcome the world. <laughs> 